my name is Thomas Dressler and in this part I'd like to introduce to you how to measure practically the motor parameters. The first measurement uh, we need to make about the motor is uh, to record the resistance of the windings. For that I will use a standard multimeter with the ohm range but uh, because this motor has a very low uh, impedance I'll need to uh, zero our measurement. So first let's take the probes and short circuit them using the relative function of the multimeter which now is used as a reference for the measurement of the resistance of the windings. Well, now we will connect the windings, wait for the stabilization and we can read the impedance or resistance of one of the windings of the motor. If we want to check that uh, the value is correct uh, between all three phases, we can as well try the measurement on other, wait for the stabilization and this way the measurement is finished. Right now we will measure the number of pole pairs. For that uh, we will require a power supply with a perceptible current limitation. So let's use this one and uh, let's choose the current limit at 1 amp. We can afford up to a nominal current of the motor but beware that uh, we will work in a DC mode so the motor can start heating very quickly. Now let's connect uh, the supply between two phases of the motor and let's turn the output on. Now the motor will emit the DC electromagnetic field in its stator where the rotor will try to snap to it. So it's very important to choose a proper current so that I can feel only the torque between the positions while if I reach the positions where the rotor is fixed and aligned to the uh, stutteric field it doesn't move and it has the lowest torque available. So let's count how many stable positions we can reach around one mechanical rotation. So now I can feel one and when I move it 180 degrees apart is another position. I'll try to verify and again I can return back to the initial position which means we have only two stable positions around one mechanical rotation. This gives us a total of two pole pairs for this motor. Our next measurement will be an inductance of the windings. So let's choose two of them and uh, let's use a RLC meter like this one to measure the inductance. So let's connect it here and we can read that uh, the inductance between the two terminals is 5.2 micro Henry. However, uh, this is not an end of this measurement because uh, depending on the motor type we can uh, identify two types one with inset permanent magnets and uh, typically with the trapezoidal shape of the back electromagnetic force or we can uh, find the one with a sinusoidal shape where we will see only one inductance over the whole range. So to be able to uh, distinguish between these two types of motors we have to measure the inductance on different angles of the rotor. This is why I will slowly turn it and always wait for the stabilization. And I can read that uh, the maximum value of the inductance is 6.4 microhenry and the minimum inductance is 4.6. This we will again record in our spreadsheet and use for the further setup 
of the FOC library. The next part of the measurement of the motor will be the electrical constant. To measure it, uh, we need to record the voltage and the frequency of uh, the output, the inducted voltage, from a spinning motor. To help ourselves, I took the acu drill and connected it on the shaft of the motor. So you can see the motor mounted here, the acu drill, and the connection of the two phases straight to the probe connected to our digital oscilloscope. So let me spin it and uh, record the measurement. Okay, now I have stopped my measurement and uh, we can look on the screen and uh, measure the shape. What is important for us, uh, it, it is to record the frequency of the measurement and the amplitude expressed in volts peak to peak. Uh, because there is a lot of noise inducted, we'll use cursors of the oscilloscope to measure the voltage. So let me choose one of the uh, one of the shapes, the one in the middle, and uh, read the peak-to-peak -peak voltage, which is in this case 438 millivolts. At the same time, we can read the frequency of the measurement, which is 24.55 hertz. Okay. Now we will record it and uh, use it later in the spreadsheet. Well, after the measurements, let's fill the measured values into the spreadsheet I have prepared to make uh, the preparation of the data for the motor control workbench a little bit easier. Let's begin with a number of pole pairs. If you remember well, we measured two. Now, let's come back to the resistance. And uh, this one, we have read as 0 0.01 ohm. Uh, be careful here, we have measured resistance between the two terminals of the motor, which takes two windings or two coils in a series. Now, let's choose the biggest of the inductances, which we measured as 6.4 microhenry. The lowest one was 4.7 microhenry, and finally, let's come back to the record of our oscilloscope with a measured frequency of 24.55 Hz and 0.4383 millivolt. With these data, we are almost ready to fill in the spreadsheet. However, there are some parameters that we are not able to measure physically, so we have to refer to the data sheet of the selected motor or use our experience. The blue motor I have chosen, the maximum rated speed is 20,000 RPM. The nominal current is 8 amps. The magnetizing current is typically the same like nominal, but can be a little bit different. And the nominal voltage for this motor is 32 volts. Finally, we have all the data and you can notice that the spreadsheet chose the permanent mo magnet synchronous motor with inset magnets. It calculated the one winding resistance as 5 milliohms, chose two pole pairs, the rated speed we have read in the data sheet, nominal current and DC voltage as well. It uh, calculated the LQ and LD plus their ratio, the demagnetizing current, and finally it calculated the electrical constant Ke. With these values, we can now come to the motor control workbench and fill in the motor parameters.